image. This text was posted onto 4chan's board back in January of 2012. Just like all things on 4chan, it was never read. Just kidding. It caught the eye of everyone from lurkers to expert cryptologists. This is the story of a true national treasure. What does it mean? Cryptologists were puzzled on this image until someone finally figured out that this image was trying to tell us something. Solvers were quick to find new things to get the message out of the image. They first tried opening it in a RAR program. Then, naturally, tried to change the brightness levels in Photoshop and analyze patterns of noise. But eventually, someone found out that opening the image in a notepad and scrolling to the bottom to find this code. Clive Lerdeus Caesar says, Beep boop beep bop beep boop beep bop boop Meaning put this text into a Caesar cipher. Here's how that works. You have the normal alphabet, and then you have the Caesar alphabet, which shifts all letters left over by four. You then can match up the values. Other values such as numbers or symbols follow this pattern. This also moves over four spaces. Finish in the cipher and you get this link to an image. Oh fuck, a dead end, right? Nope, it's another clue. Solvers were quick to find that you need to use a program called Outguess in order to get the message. Download it, run it, then open it in command prompt and run this command. Command prompt poops out the next clue. By now something is going on, and this puzzle is much more elaborate than most thought. Open in the link and you get a book code, which is a long string of numbers. To find the book and more information, go to the subreddit. This subreddit, started by Cage Throttle Lust, is called A2E7J6IC78H0J, and he has literally posted 188 threads with random letters. To solve this clue, one guy noticed Maya Roman numerals as the header of the subreddit. These numbers translate to 10, 2, 14, 7, 19, 6, 18, 12, 7, 8, 17, football, and 19. These numbers show similarities from the subreddit's full title. You need to continue converting the whole text which will give you these new numbers. Now you have a key for your book cipher, which yes, is important. Under the title is a verified note. Along with the key, these things could be anything. One of these things about the verified note would be a PGP key ID, since a lot encode them as 8 hex characters and are used to verify signature. What is a PGP key? I'll tell you. It stands for pretty good privacy, and let me tell you, it's pretty darn good at privacy. Here's how it works. Let's say you want to send a dick pic to your buddy. You put it in a box, lock the box, and send both the box and the key to your buddy. Normally, someone could snatch the package and use the key they find to open the box. But now, you and your buddy are smart and use PGP. Your buddy creates a box with two locks on the box, one with a public key and one with a private key. Public keys can only lock the box and private keys can only open it. So your buddy sends you an empty open box along with the public key. Now that you have the box, you place your pics in it and send it back to your buddy while keeping the public key. Once it gets back to your buddy, he has a private key, which is the only key that opens the box. He may now open the box. Using programs such as GNUPG, you can check and verify any message from Cicada, making fake ones obsolete. But let's get back to the Reddit post. On thread 81 and 109, we find two photos, welcome and problems. Once again, when you run these throughout guess, you get these messages. From here on out, we will cryptographically assign all the messages with this key. It is available on the Mitch's key server. Key ID 7835090F. As posted in A2E7J6IC78H0J. Patience is a virtue. Good luck. The key has always been right in front of your eye. This isn't the quest for the Holy Grail. Stop making is more difficult than it is. Good luck. You hear what that old man said? Problems mentions a key, which we have one. If we convert that key into letters, we get key number two. Now, these lines are sorted from the first thread to the last post. Our first key is very important. First, take the first letter and subtract it by 10. Then the second letter by two and so on. Once you run out of numbers, reset the list. Until you find the whole thing. To check, we can replace the first letter of all the lines with our second key. 
Once you finish it, which I'm sure you did, go back to the original book code. To read this, the first number means a line, and the second means which character. For example, this one means go to the first line and take the 20th character, spaces included. After going through and getting all the letters, you get this text. I mean, you get this text. They never included a last number. Call us at us telephone number 2143909608. Alright, so let's call it. Hello, I am your Microsoft customer support. I can't help you today. Uh, oh, not that one, this one. Very good. You have done well. There are three prime numbers associated with the original final dot JPEG image. 3301 is one of them. You will have to find the other two. Multiply all three of these numbers together and add a dot com on the end to find the next step. Good luck. Goodbye. Yes. Okay, so the two prime numbers are their original image's dimensions. Multiply all three numbers together and add the dot com to the end. You may have also noticed this number in the PGP encryption. Click this site and you get an image and a countdown. <laughs> a countdown to what? Well, when we run an image throughout guests, we get this code. You have done well to come this far. Patience is a virtue. Check back at 1700 on Monday, January 9th of 2012, the Universal Time Zone. <laughs> oh look, the countdown is done. <laughs> coordinates? Oh no. Yes, coordinates. This part took longer than the countdown. Why? Well, you have one in Warsaw, Poland, two in Paris, France, three in Seattle, Washington, two in Seoul, South Korea, one at the University of Arkansas in Fayetteville, Arkansas, And five more at these locations, totaling 14 new clues we need to solve. It's pretty clear this isn't one person screwing with the internet. Okay, so you gotta go to all these locations and scan these barcodes. Do it? Okay, good. Good news, you don't have to go to all these locations because there are only two messages to be found. So let's say you scan the two different QR codes. You would get two different URLs with a photo and a text everywhere and 3301. These two photos contain these two messages. And, um, do you think you can say that a little more clearly? Okay, um, yeah, a poem of the fading death named for a king, meant to be read only once and vanish at last. It could not remain unseen, along with 22 lines of book code. Yeah, I know this is hard to look at, but just stick around, okay? Okay, so how do you solve this? Well, both of these lines contain the product of the first two primes, and only one contains the first prime. Obviously, meaning multiply out of first two primes. Which primes, though? After no debate, the solvers decided the first two prime numbers were the first two in the order, two and three. So now let's change these appropriately. Now we need a book for our book codes. Let's start with the first clue. By googling for some of the keywords in the second message, a wiki entry for the poem Agrippa by William Gibson is found. According to the Wikipedia, its principle notoriously arose from the fact that the poem, stored on a 3.5 inch floppy disk, was programmed to erase itself after a single use. Similarly, the pages of the artist's book were treated with photosensitive chemicals, affecting the gradual fading of the words and images from the book's first exposure to light. This perfectly fits our description of a poem of fading death, named for a king, meant to be read only once and vanish at last. It could not remain unseen. When we Google William Gibson Agrippa, it takes us to a website in the book. Now, just like before, the goal is to follow the book code and gather each letter. When finished, the text given is a URL. But not just any URL, a Tor URL. You may have heard of the deep and dark web, and this is where it leads. So, download a copy of the Tor browser, load it up, and go to the Tor service. 
Still watching? Good. I just wanted to inform you that I have no idea what I'm talking about. From this point on, though, every clue given is private, and those who registered their email in time have received an invitation to the party. You can pause the video now to read this, and if you don't want to hear my tale, you can skip to 11 minutes and 2 seconds to continue after this part. Okay, so what about the other poem? Since both poems have the same amount of book lines and have the correct numbers, it was probably the same clue we received earlier. But just to be safe, we'll want to solve it. However, after all this time, this clue cannot be solved. I spent a couple of hours myself trying to find an answer, and I couldn't seem to get one. If you would like to try out this side of the puzzle, feel free, as no one has solved it yet. Moving on. Okay, so you've registered your email. Eventually, you'll receive an email looking something like this. I'm just going to cut out some stuff to read it better. Want to know how to solve this clue? No? Well, too bad. Oh, and if you thought things were easy throughout this scavenger hunt, things are about to get a little more complex. Basically, the clue is asking us to break the RSA encrypted message. And if someone has a good understanding of it, they can use the public key and private key to decrypt the message. I'm not going to go into the math of the RSA encryption because it's too much for one person to handle all at once. But if I had to explain it, it's like an entire semester of calculus. It's definitely challenging to understand, but you'll never use it in real life. Not to mention each person receives a different number. How it works is that E is the public key, and N is the private key. E is a pretty standard variable for RSA encryption, but the private key is unique. The private key is a product of two prime numbers. This number is a low bit modulus. Yeah, this number. In other words, yeah, your penis is big, but compared to Google's penis, you better have a good personality. You'll be able to find the two prime numbers using programs and codes such as Python, although this takes time. Your computer checks through each number until it finds the two correct prime numbers that equal our original. <clears throat> oh, by the way, Cracking Google's RSA 2048 encryption key would take trillions of trillions of trillions of years. In fact, RSA Laboratories currently has a number this large involving two prime numbers. And if you find those two numbers, you'll get $200,000, which you can invest into like lube or jello. I've, I've got a feeling, you know, those two things will skyrocket in the coming. Ah, uh, it's done. Here are the two prime numbers that multiply that big old number. Now, to continue, you'll need the other decryption schemes to solve it. Up next would be to download the decryption scheme they give us, which is RSA Perl Module. Go to C-SPAN and download it. Or not, you can run this code and you should get a number. Keep in mind this number was different for everyone. And I couldn't get the damn program to work. My bad, guys. Pretty good, huh? That song continues and can create notes visually. Once we do so, we can display all the notes like such. The song you heard actually contains two songs, one being a key and the other containing a code. You can download programs to analyze the song, or you can just watch the visual. The first song has high notes and the second song has low notes. These notes can be any variable, but we'll range them from 43 to 67. Both songs share a common note of 55. The length of the note that is played also matters. This can be seen, but it would be nice to use a program to help us. A MIDI converter can be used to have the notes written out. And programs such as Melodyne or a free one such as MF2T-T2MF can be used. Using the program, we can confirm that the audio is stereo and is playing two different songs. The minimal note length will be 24 ticks long and the longest will be 386 ticks long. We can now gather all the low notes ranging from 43 to 55 and display them as so. Once finished, use the chorus given to match up each letter. You can now see patterns, with note strings matching with each letter. If you continue this, eventually you'll be able to make an alphabet. You may notice that even though the note length matters, all notes from our first song are lower than our second. To solve this, all notes now go in an octave higher. So now our lowest note, which is 43, now becomes 55, along with all other notes. Now, you can solve it. And that's all the puzzles. Solvers were given nothing, but hey, they might just be saying that. Okay, that's everything. If I don't end the video right now, they'll come for me.